at the outset uh, i will welcome there uh, is a program uh, dr sri kalyan sir dr uh, ankit deep sir scientist from icr india rekarnal and students of the college uh, this uh, lecture is organized on the occasion of university foundation day of march uh, this uh, university was established in on uh, 3rd of september 2000 and uh, this university is taking efforts uh, for enhancing quality education uh, in the field of veterinary dairy and fishery and with this uh, we are also uh, doing work in the field of uh, research and extension and uh, and in the very few years uh, in last 22 years it has achieved a minimum of one before uh, starting the actual lecture i would like to welcome uh, associate dean dr asbit kalyan to deliver his address uh, thank you engineer uh, so for today's webinar the speaker engineer ankit deep engineer chopre and student friends Firstly, I greet you all on this our University Foundation Day. So we know that uh, on today's day, uh, in the year 2000, our university was established with the motto of teaching, research, and education. This theme and this are there. So in last 22 years, our university has achieved. Uh, significant uh, the accomplishments and the achievements uh, every year on this day we organize many such activities this are this day also we have organized to celebrate our this university foundation day so in this way uh, this year we have organized that a uh, clean milk production camp then a uh, uh, demonstration for farmers on paneer manufacturing then personality development programs for students So, as a part of these activities, this year, uh, this today's uh, lecture by this uh, by our Dr. Ankit Deep, uh, Ankit Deep sir is with us for this today's lecture. Uh, so, I congratulate Dr. Uh, Engineer Sopreet sir that he has organized uh, such a nice lecture, uh, and I also thank Dr. Ankit sir that he has accepted our invita invitations. on a very short notice so without uh, without taking much ado so i hand over this uh, program to engineer santosh sir thank you sir sir thank you thank you thank you very much sir thank you for guiding our students uh, now i will uh, call uh, engineer ankit dip sir uh, for his uh, lecture on implementation to dairy processing equipment Before that, I will like to introduce uh, to the uh, audience. So, uh, engineer Ankit Dip sir is a scientist at uh, National Dairy Research Institute, which is a premier uh, institute uh, in the in the field of dairy science in Asia. Uh, he is associated with the NDRI from uh, for more than uh, five years, and uh, he has been uh, he has a great experience in the teaching, research, and Uh, extension to uh, uh, he has published uh, many research papers uh, and he has guided uh, more than five students uh, of uh, PG. So I would like to call uh, Engineer Ankit Dip sir uh, for his lecture. Sir, please. Thank you, thank you, Chopre. Uh, I I thank you for inviting uh, me on this particular lecture on the eve of your university foundation day I congratulate uh, all of uh, the students and staff on this uh, very occasion now uh, without which wasting much of the time uh, uh, let me share my screen with you thank you uh, one and all uh, and good morning very good morning uh, I would uh, now be presenting uh, Uh, talk rather rather than a lecture i would uh, call it to a talk on orientation to dairy processing equipment uh, student as you all know that in uh, dairy processing operation 
the equipments which deals with the processing are for certain operations so if we talk regarding the dairy processing operation basically what do we have we have heat transfer operations separation operation mixing and agitation homogenization coagulation fermentation concentration packaging and storage so these are major categories under which we can classify several processing operations including packaging and storage as well so out of these uh, we can see that uh, the basic and the most important operation without which the dairy processing just cannot occur is the first and foremost heat transfer whether it is a heating or a cooling duty we always require either to heat the milk or milk product or to cool it so maybe it is cooling chilling freezing pasteurization etc for any product you name it any of the product would require it so the equipments which are to be dealt in uh, uh, in the heat transfer operation would be the heat exchangers uh, then aging tanks freezers chillers pasteurizers so these are the uh, we can say heart of the operation dairy processing operation and uh, other equipments and uh, operations are running around these so these would be the mo most important ones then uh, the other part of operation we can say is separation just like in the case of cream separation whey filtration clarification etc the uh, cream or uh, some suspended solids would uh, be required to be separated out of the uh, these dairy streams so this dairy stream uh would be having say suspended solids and uh, we may require clarifiers cream separators membrane filters etc then in the case of mixing and agitation we require mixers agitators sonicators then for uh, mixing and agitation a special category or a special case can be called as a homogenization in which we are forcefully dividing the particles into smaller parts so that they are unable to separate on their own and we call that as homogenization so we can have a forceful mixing or we can have some shear action maybe with the help of pressurizing through some valves or maybe through application of ultrasound or sonicators so that that can cause a uh, very fine distribution of particles then coagulation as in the case of paneer cheese etc fermentation the like uh, fermented dairy products dahi lassi chhas concentration for sweetened condensed milk just in the uh, 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 as per the application of evaporators dryers etc then packaging obviously whatever product is required to be sold into the market has to be packaged somehow so depending on what kind of product it is the packaging material its machine would be different then storage storage may be for the packaged product for the intermediate product for the raw material so different kinds of storage vessels would be required now out of these processing operation i would like to cover in detail the heat transfer operation specifically pasteurization which will involve both heating and cooling then separation operation specifically cream separation and somewhat clarifiers and then uh, basic homogenization principle now let us go on to the pasteurizer basically as we know that uh, in the case of pasteurization we require uh, the uh, milk to be heated first to the required temperature held at uh, that temperature for some time and then it would be required to be immediately cooled so we require a heat exchanger to perform that duty in that uh, operation we can have two methods ltlt which is low temperature long time and htst high temperature short time in the case of ltlt we can use simple equipment just like your storage tank 
uh, which are having a jacket so that we can fill it with a heating or a cooling media as the case may be depending on the requirement so here we are seeing that this is a, a storage vessel or a, just a vessel with some volumetric capacity a motor or agitator is mounted on the lid of the vessel then this lid can be uh, opened by this hinge as it is hinge mounted we would be having a temperature indicator and a control panel and this is the jacket part of it and in this jacket here a steam line is coming into this jacket so that we uh, can heat the contents of the vessel and this agitator will be providing the uniform heat uh, heating rate or increased heating rate so as to maintain the uh, optimum or uniform temperature throughout the vessel's content and there is the milk outlet pipeline shown to you here so after the processing will be over maybe just heating just cooling or both one by one after uh, a holding in between we can have a outlet pipe with a valve obviously and uh, the uh, there would be a steam condensate line which is not shown in this picture and this has to be insulated from the outside so here what we can do is we can fill it with milk and then steam can be supplied and this is uh, vessel contents can be agitated so that uniform temperature would be maintained it would be hold for some time and after that time the steam line can be uh, filled uh, with uh, cold water or just normal water so that the temperature goes down after some time if it was uh, the uh, ambient temperature water or raw water it would be required to be replaced with cold water or chilled water just to save energy we can use not ambient temperature water in between otherwise chilled water will do the purpose faster and that is how it can be done now uh, for its uh, alternatives what uh, are the equipments available in the market here you can see this this particular equipment this is a batch pasteurizer just as i have explained in the previous diagram another one and this this one is having a specific agitator design so that it can be used as a process vessel means we can uh, use it for uh, process cheese manufacturing blending of ingredients in hot or cold uh, conditions uh, as as the case may be as per our requirement we can use it for uh, say uh, Uh, dough formation for uh, say pizza base or uh, etc so that uh, we can utilize the equipment for multi purpose not just the pasteurization or heating or cooling duty it can be utilized for uh, several other operations now these uh, these equipments at the bottom side you are you may be much more familiar with these are uh, steam kettles steam jacketed kettles with the steam line so in this in this uh, vessel we are not having a cooling arrangement so it would be just used for just heating the contents not to cool the content after the contents are heated it can be transferred to some another equipment or vessel where in the cooling can happen so this was regarding batch pasteurization now if we require to do the process faster we can use the principle of plate heat exchanger instead of that batch equipment so that in continuously when the fluid uh, the to be processed is coming without waiting without uh, uh, being hold it can be continuously processed so here we are seeing a diagram indicating a plate heat exchanger in which a number of plates are stacked together with some gasket so that there is a gap in between here you can see the uh, single plate it is showing uh, the gasket is shown so the gasket is uh, in uh, involving two of the connections inside the gaskets two of the connection outside so here you are seeing the alternating pattern of the plate with the gasket so that these pipelines uh, or these connections they are uh, providing the heating or uh, the product heating medium or product in alternatory spaces so here we are seeing that two the uh, between two plates one of the uh, medium is there say this blue one is the product and it is going skipping this plate in between and going to the uh, the next one uh, the uh, uh, alternative uh, plate 
so that in between we would be having heating media so this heating media will be providing a heat to both sides and similarly this uh, product can receive heat from both sides so uh, on the other side there would be one more heating media plate and these plates would be stacked together so here you see the working of the plate heat exchanger so here this cooling uh, this uh, uh, milk is coming it is going to heat recovery then heating section and it is coming to the holding tube coming back to the heat recovery and then it is going into the cooling section side so this was the fluid to be processed now is coming the heating media say steam or hot water and it is going out from the heating section only in the heat recovery medium side we are having both sides the product uh, unprocessed and processed one and in the cooling medium side we are having chilled water to be supplied in the another uh, alternating pair of the uh, this plates so this is how the plate heat exchanger is stacked together and then it can be uh, precisely packed into smaller unit and process the fluid at once this diagram is showing the skid mounted milk pasteurizer with all other accessories so here you are seeing that plate heat exchanger which i explained it to you in the previous slide and here we are having these pumps so there is one pump which is supplying the milk from this balance tank so this would be the raw milk balance tank wherein the milk will be coming there is this is the inline filter from this pump the milk will be going into this side and then it is going through these stacks and after this stack of tubes it is going to this holding tube so this this side here here we are having holding tubes after holding tube we are having this booster pump so this this pump will be supplying additional pressure because uh, some of the pressure will be dropped and uh, depending on whether the temperature were reached or not a flow diversion valve will be diverting the fluid to be uh, to the recovery section or to the balance tank this would be much more clear in uh, upcoming slides this particular diagram is shown to you that a uh, in industrial pasteurizer which is bolted to the floor the previous one was skid mounted it can be moved uh, as per our requirement uh, if it is required but this is bolted to the ground here you are seeing that it is having foundation bolts with these plates directly bolted to the ground so it would not be moved and they they are uh, very heavy equipments and they are uh, placed as per the layout of the design of equipment so the previous equipment uh, which i just now showed to you the, this is the line diagram the raw chill milk is coming into the balance tank then it is coming through this uh, duplex filter then it is going to this pasteurizer regeneration side and from this regeneration side it would be uh, uh, heating slowly going uh, to the uh, uh, say cream separator or so if not then it would be uh, just passing by and to the heating section after heating section it is the holding tubes after holding tubes there is a flow diversion valve which is shown to you here this flow diversion valve will be having a temperature sensor which will uh, sense whether the processing temperatures are still existing or whether it has fallen down if it has fallen down it would be required to reprocess so it would return to the balance tank and if it is uh, up to the mark then it will be going back to the regeneration section after chilling it will go to the packaging side this is the control panel with the chart recorder chart recorder will record that at what time what was the temperature of this holding tubes uh, uh, this uh, flow diversion valve raw milk and many more parameters as, as per the manufacturer's design we can have several scribes inserted into it depending on what are the parameters in which a plant is interested to note down now this particular slide is showing that what is the requirement of that regeneration section so here you are seeing that residence time profile how it behaves so initially we are having cold milk coming in see this this cold milk is in the balance tank then it goes to the regenerator so in regenerator here you are seeing that this graph is showing a increase in temperature so for example here say 5 6 degrees 
it is it has reached up to say 68 69 degrees celsius after regeneration and it is taking almost say 12 seconds raw side raw milk side after in the heating section it is taking just 5 second to reach the temperature say 78 or so because in the holding tube the temperature will gradually fall down and the at the exit of holding tube the temperature has to be maintained at a minimum uh, temperature level as per the uh, prescription of the standards so uh, let us say in our case it is 72 degrees celsius in, in the standards it is 71.5 degrees celsius for 15 seconds but industry uh, they, they keep it just a little bit higher for safety that 72 degrees celsius for uh, one more second 16 second so this holding tube is uh, uh, indicating that there is a gradual fall in temperature at the exit of holding tube we are having a maintenance of temperature at this 72 degrees celsius as the minimum temperature then it goes to the regeneration section again on the pasteurizer side pasteurized milk side and uh, it is uh, getting a drop down in the temperature then it goes to the cooling section side and the temperature is reduced to less than 4 degrees celsius so in this case what we are doing we are investing in energy in the heating section side for this 5 second duration and the cooling section side for 7 uh, second duration here in between this part regeneration this part here and this part here so the milk is heating the milk and the pasteurized milk uh, is cooling uh, this uh, the pasteurized milk is cooling uh, heating the raw milk and raw milk is cooling the pasteurized milk so the energy is being recycled reused again and again and that is called as regeneration so regeneration of energy in the form of temperature transfer or heat transfer is done here to calculate what is the regeneration efficiency we can use this equation wherein tr minus ti upon tp minus ti into 100 is used for calculation where ti is the raw milk inlet temperature tr is preheat temperature at the outlet of heat regeneration just where it is going into the heating section and tp is the pasteurization temperature means after the holding tip the pasteurization temperature so it would be say 72 degrees celsius or depending on the industry they may keep it at 75 or 78 like that so when we calculate this this heat recovery comes out to be as large as 90 to 96 percent so we are investing only about say 4 to 10 percent of energy in the pasteurization rest of the energy is recycled so it is a huge saving on the energy side now this particular line is showing you that other equipments or accessories which could also be connected just like here you can see for example this is a cream separator and this is an homogenizer so if we are taking the milk outside this regeneration section it can pass through a cream separator for uh, say separation of excess milk fat and homogenizer if the cream was to be mixed into so uh, if this cream is required to be mixed into and uh, because uh, say our initial milk was having lesser fat content and we need to increase it then homogenizer would be used so generally both are placed in line so as to have a standardization so whatever fat percentage we require we can uh, first separate that fat out and then we can uh, mix the required quantity only with the milk so here we are seeing that this 7 here 7 3 times it is there so this 7 number is flow transmitter so this depending on this flow rate of these process streams there would be a proportionate mixing of skim milk with the cream so as to obtain the percentage fat required for a particular product and then it, it would be again processed just like the previous case only so these two are additional equipments here so uh, i would just be explaining uh, to you what is the working of this cream separator and homogenizer so this this diagram this is a cream separator self cleaning type so in this diagram what what we can see is 
that uh, as we know that cream or fat is lighter uh, with respect to rest of the milk component means the density is less so by gravity all of the other component will try to settle down and cream portion will try to rise up but by gravity it takes a lot of time and would happen much more quicker if the milk is hot or uh, it is say at least warm but in industry if we are required to use a process wherein we would not provide any holding of such kind then this process is required to be done fastly in a line so for that the equipments like cream separators are used so in this cream separator here you see th this is the motor or drive side and this the, the, there is a warm gear so this gear gear will be turning this horizontal rotation into vertical rotation of this shaft so there, there is a milk bowl in which a stack of plate is placed so this stack of plate which is placed inside the milk bowl it would be fed in with the milk supply if the milk supply can be from bottom as well as from top so depending on manufacturer they can provide the inlet from the bottom side or also from the top side in this part of the diagram it is showing that incoming milk stream is from the bottom side in this diagram also the milk stream is also from the bottom side only but in some other design and in the next slide i would be showing you that the milk supply can also be from the top side so let us just see this diagram this is the milk bowl with, uh, with this uh, discharge so this is the clarifier not the separator the milk will be coming from this side this line here and then it will be going into this milk bowl so milk bowl which is the rotor of this assembly it is stacked with this uh, disc and these discs are having these holes so these holes the location of these holes is very critical so these holes what they would be doing is they would be adding into the separation process so uh, this is realizing very high g forces due to rotational energy instead of utilizing the gravitational energy so here in you are seeing the stream with suspended solids which is unclarified liquid is coming into and these suspended solids which whose density is higher than the rest of the liquid is required to be separated out so on the basis of density difference the force centrifugal force is applied and due to density the force experienced by this solids would be higher so here in you are seeing that it is being accelerated towards the downside to the uh, distributor so there there is the product distributor or milk distributor wherein the product it is expanding in flow more amount of uh, milk can be accommodated so more and more quantity would be fed into it then this after distribution it goes into this rising channels so we are having these channels at the at, uh, at the bottom most plate so here we are having rising channels wherein the product distributes throughout the assembly with the suspended solids indeed and it is Uh, split over the large number of disc interspaces means the space between two consecutive disc this part of the uh, disc assembly this assembly is the disc interspace so here we are seeing the solids which is uh, which are rising up the disc they they are proliferating throughout the stack this stack and this stack is rotated this rotation is provided by the motor which was at the bottom and uh, this is how it gets distributed spread all over the equipment and then after this spreading occurs the due to this centrifugal force what happens as these particles these suspended solid particles are having higher density than the rest of the liquid they are pushed away from the center so here you are seeing that these solids are diverted away from the center in the radial direction due to their higher density against this conical disc and they are tending to accumulate at the periphery of the vessel so when they are accumulating at the periphery of the vessel they are providing a ring 
of the suspended solids and the rest of the clarified liquid which is devoid of the suspended solids will collect at the top side of the equipment. So here we are seeing this, uh, these red particles which are showing which is uh, indicating that suspended solids they are getting deposited towards the wall or towards this peripheral portion wherein this solid uh, deposition space has been provided and this is provided with the holding this 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 is the hinge where wherein it can be moved it, during the rotation of the assembly this this plate can, this can be disengaged this is hydraulic a sliding piston op operates so that this accumulated solids can be discharged without stopping the machine this accumulated solids can be discharged by opening this gap periodically so that the more solids can be deposited and at this uh, this is spinning so we are getting the spiral uh, pattern of this solid discharge of the accumulated solid in the peripheral region outside this vessel so so that uh, during the working of the clarifier we do not need to stop the clarifier in between to clean this up so this is the self cleaning type and then again as the space has been emptied more solids can then be deposited and it, it, it can be then again uh, opened as, as the solids deposit there this is now here we are seeing the clarified liquid which is still rising up and it rises up in the annular space because the central pipe was for incoming milk or incoming fluid so in the annular space another pipeline is provided with the same axis as the inlet pipe and it is rising up in this annular space into the upper portion of the equipment or vessel wherein we are having this centripetal pump in which the pump is stationary but liquid rotates so here you see that these arrows are direction of arrow is showing that how the liquid is coming into this part of vessel and it is entering into this centripetal pump this is the centripetal pump and this is how it entered and we are having some uh, veins so here we are having spiral veins wherein liquid will be entering spiraling into this centripetal pump this pump is stationary liquid is moving and then it is exiting at the outer edge uh, 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 over to the top part wherein it would be discharged through a spout so here we, we, we would be providing a spout here it is shown to you in this diagram this in through this spout this clarified liquid can be uh, removed from the vessel similarly if we are having this as a cream separator we would be having one more spout in which skim milk and cream both will be there cream portion obvious will be on the top and skim milk portion will be at a lower end so this is how the clarification uh, in the self cleaning type clarifier occurs now coming on to the homogenizer homogenizer this is a equipment wherein forceful mixing of this uh, cream would be done specifically in dairy processing operation we uh, when we require to reconstitute the uh, contents to uh, provide a uniform product consistency and quality we generally use homogenizers homogenizers can be of several kinds uh, one of the most popular kind of homogenizer and mostly used homogenizer is of this type which is providing which is uh, having a uh, reciprocating pump arrangement so here you are seeing there are three pistons this is the reciprocating pump arrangement part of this homogenizer there is a prime mover or motor here at the back end rear end this is the crank and shaft arrangement of this reciprocating arrangement the, this part is the cylinder this uh, this uh, this is a piston and then uh, it is coming into this part of the vessel and this is the stainless steel pump block this seven number this stainless steel pump block and eight number here these, these these are the valves so at the bottom end we would be having inlet valves at the top end we would be having outlet valves and this particular block is fitted at the uh, head part of this piston and cylinder assembly at the bottom edge here you are seeing this 
yellow colored line which is shown to you this is the incoming milk or the uh, milk with the cream to be mixed in in the same line coming into the vessel uh, or the equipment and this green line is the outlet part wherein these have been mixed together so this is the conceptual diagram and this part this figure this part of figure is the actual how how the equipment looks like or feels to be uh, this uh, homogenizer uh, this is uh, of goma company now coming on to the working here you can see uh, this part this this bottom is the inlet inlet part of the homogenizer and this is the outlet part and in between we are having homogenizing valve so here you can see uh, uh, we are having this uh, motor prime mover arrangement piston and shaft arrangement and this yellow portion this is the feed coming into the homogenizer then this feed is coming into this uh, inlet valve part is there so from this inlet valve part we would be having uh, uh, these feed stream going into this separate three cylinders and they are timed at 120 degree phase angle so that when one of the valve is being sucking another is discharging the flow must not stop and uh, as they are not at 180 degree phase angle they are at 120 degree phase angle there would be no such shocks into either inlet or outlet lines so here you are seeing that feed is coming into the cylinder blocks and it is going out of the cylinder blocks so this is the just the pump part so that high pressure develops and homogenization homogenization will occur after this part so here you are seeing that how this piston is moving into the cylinder and these valves these spring loaded valves how they are operating in the timely fashion this is the prime mover shaft which is shown to you here so the milk is coming with this suspended solid and being discharged with suspended solid now uh, there has not been any reduction of diameter of particle here because homogenizing part is yet to come in this particular figure uh, this is just the pumping part of it so it would develop a high pressure and this is the homogenizing valve attachment or the head wherein this high pressure high pressurized flow of feed stream will come into so this blue color is the homogenizing valve and red color is the valve seat or we can say the sleeve so when this valve comes near to the valve sleeve so that the gap is in millimeter or micrometer ranges then only homogenizing stream so here you are seeing that when this there is a, a gap the uh, a huge gap the uh, particle size is not getting reduced the particle size will reduce when this gap closes by and it is a smaller in size so when we will be pressurizing this block so that the valve pushes hardly against this valve seat now there this these uh, these fat particles have dis started disintegrating into very small particles now as the particle size has become so small they will be much uniformly mixing with the feed stream and that is how the homogenizing action occurs so this is this was the overall working of the homogenizer now this is showing uh, the overall picture of the main pumping block of the system the homogenizing happens only in the valve part this is the pumping block and it is a triplex reciprocating pump now uh, after these three uh, processing equipment let me draw your attention towards the classification of traditional dairy products so as you know that milk can be utilized for production of various traditional dairy products Uh, for example depending on the type of process used it may be heat and acid coagulation heat desiccation then channa based confection skua based confection addition of cereal and desiccation fat concentration freezing fermentation we can yield various kinds of products so we are having a lot of scope so here you can see that depending on what operations or what type of equipments we do have we can utilize those equipments for production of these value added traditional dairy products where we can increase the shelf life the uh, acceptability 
as well as add on to the value in terms of finance in terms of economics so the product financial value increases so there would be a profit so profitability increases if we process the milk into milk products so depending on what kind of processing equipment is available we can convert milk into those dairy products and then we can uh, then launch those products or supply it to the market to yield the maximum benefit now this particular uh, table is showing you to you that how much quant quantity of milk is required for one unit production of these various indian milk products so uh, the uh, uh, from this uh, chart you can uh, just have an idea that say for example this dahi uh, the dahi is same as the quantity of milk and the value increases say approximately uh, uh, to 2 to 5 times so depending on uh, what quality or what customer acceptability you have so we can uh, provide a lot of benefit and aid into the higher economic growth of dairy farmers so students in the end i would like to uh, thank you all for patience hearing uh, and uh, i would end with this uh, lecture or uh, we can say a talk uh, now it is open for you to ask if you are having any queries thank you students if you have any question you can ask sir what is mean by vacuation 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 is basically a process in which vacuum is used to suck out the volatiles from the product stream so uh, it can so then what is the difference between deodorizer difference between what deodorizer and vacuator basically in principle the working of both is same we can have a uh, uh, certain differences in uh, say what kind of product you are talking deodorizer can be to remove foul smell from say incoming milk or say some product uh, uh, or so but in the case of vacuators it can be used for recovery of those valuable volatiles which may be then mixed back into the product stream when required for say flavor just like as you are uh, having say essential oil extraction plant where vacuator may be used to ca catch those volatile fumes uh, which are essential oil basically and then they can be separately sold they can be mixed in the product so that the flavor profile is saved customer acceptability increases but in the case of deodorizer all of those uh, uh, this uh, uh, volatiles will be lost to the environment they would not be uh, there there is no, no option of uh, catching it uh, for storage or reuse sir can i explain the concept cavitation in homogenizer cavitation in homogenizer basically cavitation uh, 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 the process of cavitation is when there is formation of low pressure zone due to uh this uh, when the fat globules or the milk stream is coming at the out of the homogenizer wall when it is coming out of the homogenizer wall it is feeling very free of pressure because there was a higher pressure after triplex pump between the homogenizer wall and triplex pump as it passes the homogenizer wall the pressure immediately releases when immediately the pressure releases due to low pressure the contents uh, uh, vapor pressure falls down and it is starts immediately to boil when it is boiling means it is having bubbles so bubbling up starts when this bubbling up starts and it immediately sees a rise in pressure maybe due to another homogenizing valve in series or due to some other pipeline fitting in series with the homogenizing valve at the exit end then again when pressure increases that increased in pressure uh, tries to explode the valve uh, implode that formed bubble into itself so it it, in, uh, it causes a implosion of bubble into itself and it disintegrates it into smaller particles so that is what do we mean by cavitation yes tejas 
हॉट वाटर बैटरी फॉर पॉस्टराइजर इज फॉर क्रिएटिंग और से फॉर मेंटेनिंग द हाइयर टेम्परेचर ऑफ द हॉट वाटर इन द हीटिंग सेक्शन बिकॉज वी कैन नॉट यूज स्टीम डायरेक्टली फॉर मिल्क हीटिंग इन द पॉस्चुराइजर फॉर सम रीजन लाइक इफ वी इंट्रोड्यूस स्टीम इन टू द मिल्क पॉस्चुराइजर देन स्टीम ड्यू टू इट्स हाइयर टेम्परेचर प्रेशर वेलॉसिटी ऑल थ्री इंग्रीडियंट्स it will bulge the end where it is entering the plate the plate will physically get deformed there will be larger temperature gradients and if we are replacing it with the hot water the hot water temperature will fall down sharply because it is just providing the sensible heating not latent heating latent heating it can be provided by steam hot water will provide only sensible heating to so to maintain the temperature of hot water a hot water battery is the name of equipment wherein the temperature of hot water is maintained by mixing it directly with the steam so steam condenses forms hot water into the recirculating water stream so that is hot water battery yes yes rushil uh, nowadays uh, in many dairies uh, there is automatic sanitation units are used right yes so uh, can you tell us something about it how does it work basically it was works on the density uh, measurement and flow measurement because we know that the density of fat stream and the skim milk stream is different skim milk is higher in density fat stream is lower in density and if we can control precisely the flow of both we can uh, have a particular fat snf concentration in the outgoing stream so uh, at the outset uh, thank you sir thank you for delivering a lecture uh, full of uh, knowledge and uh, i believe that uh, the students and the uh, faculty members are here uh, they have enjoyed the lecture sir has started from the started from a very basic of uh, equipments that has uh, covered uh, most all the equipments which are required for milk processing Uh, he has uh, talked uh, about the working principles design construction features of equipment thank you very much sir thank you for uh, taking time uh, to uh, participate in this uh, talk thank you thank you sir